Hello everyone, so today we have a 1990 911 Carrera 2 uh, odometer repair. We're gonna remove this, we're gonna take this all apart and find the broken gears inside and then replace them. So come check the inside of this thing out. The most tricky thing about this entire job is removing this black bezel and then also reinstalling it. Uh, so this is the really the trickiest part of the job. You gotta have a bunch of you kind of like have to make all your own tools and stuff. You definitely want to spend lots of time doing this. Don't try to remove this bezel in like five minutes. You'll end up breaking it. Okay. The older ones are trickier sometimes, like they take longer. So like the ones from the 70s and 80s, they just take more time to get this bezel off. It's, it's the way it's made, it's different. This is like a single piece bezel. Uh, well, this, this, this piece is one piece, but then on the other one, like on a 911 SC, it's a two piece bezel. It's, it's technically, it's like a three piece bezel and this one's a two piece, but the outer ring is this, this piece right here inside is different than the piece on the outside on the uh, 911 SC. And then on the 964, they went with this more single piece, which it's a little bit, little tiny bit easier to remove. But time is just on your side here. You just want to be able to spend lots of time on it. ever so slightly we're going to remove this ring like that and that we're going to take it apart because we want to clean the back side of this and then that bezel is still kind of tight but that's all right So this is just like a two piece, two piece bezel. Two black rings. The older cars had three black rings. So. And on this car, it is plastic. This is just plastic, so it's, um, usually it's the right kind of Lexan, so you won't scratch it. Um, I do have some replacements, so if I have to replace them, then we can put new ones in. I'm going to remove this ring, like that and that. We're going to take it apart because we want to clean the back side of this. And then that bezel is still kind of tight, but that's all right. So this is just like a two piece, two piece bezel, two black rings. The older cars had three black rings. And on this car, it is plastic. This is just plastic. We're going to remove this assembly and bring it out of this uh, metal casing. I always inspect these and just see if they've ever been removed before. This may have been removed before. I mean, the green, the little green seal kind of missing over on this side. It could have been scratched off. So when you break that seal and unscrew it for the first time, there's a little green seal that <clears throat> goes away. This one looks like it's been removed. 
And what you want to do is also make sure that you don't touch the black face over here too much just because the oil in your hands. Let me just go get some gloves on. Right now we're going to remove the needle. Um, this one doesn't sit all the way on the bottom. So that needle is not pointing to that bottom dash. It's just above it, barely. Porsche usually always points them right perfect to the uh, white dash. We are going to put a little tiny mark. It's actually just about a half a needle width above the top line of the bottom dash is where that guy is. So that's where it's going to go back. Get my trusty phone out, snap a photo, and then we're going to gently remove this needle back and forth on the stop, like back and forth against the stop while only using your fingers. Do not use a tool other than your fingers to remove this needle back and forth. Beautiful. The needle is off. And we wanna make sure that that little, the axle for that needle is still poking up in there. So see that little tiny axle? It's right there. That's what we're trying to, that's all we're, it's a tapered fit. So that's how it's supposed to fit. These are in here pretty tight. Hey, there we go. You'd think all these would be kind of similar or the same, but they're, they're not, they're all different. So there's a circuit board. This circuit board up here is just stuck. And the wires are just hanging on to it. There we go. So that circuit board was stuck up inside there. Just be careful with everything. You can see how this one actually has this nice little guide that holds all the wires. See how all uh, five wires go through this little guide right here. So I just pushed them out of that guide. Okay. Okay, I've taken some channel locks here and I've tightened them down after I crimped them. What I'm doing is I'm putting them right in between there and when I pull on it, I'm not pulling on the assembly down here. I'm pulling on this hard piece of plastic right here. And there we go. Just putting some nice even pressure on this knob with my hands. This vice grip is only acting as a holder. Okay, that's all you're doing with it. Okay, now that's off. Now, we can remove this guy. Here, let's get this guy out of the way as well. Go right here. This comes right there. The gears are on the uh, other end of this motor and you wanna see how this uh, wire is routed. This blue wire comes around here, goes back through there. Same thing with black wire comes over here and back over here. You want to be careful because like this wire is actually kind of pushing up real hard against that metal case of the, of the motor. Okay. Okay, and over here we have some motors that are hanging out. Uh, this gear. And we can see right here, we've lost a tooth. See how if you look at right, it's actually stuck as well. See right here, it's missing a tooth right there. And then it was also just stuck on there. This is kind of, this is a, uh, like a spider gear set up in a transmission, uh, not a spider gear, a planetary gear set up just like in a transmission. So it works on a, on a planetary system where one gear turns and another gear turns around. It kind of orbits like a planetary system. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, one. 
17 teeth. If it's a 17 tooth, it's for Singapore. I do have a gear for a Singapore car, Singapore delivery car, which is a 17 tooth. I get these uh, sent in to me from all over the world, so you never know where the original delivery was coming from or anything. It's like it's a Canadian, European, Singapore. Um, so let's just, we're gonna re-verify that we've got uh, 17 teeth on each of these. We're gonna use that little mark that I made. And then this gear right here goes down. This is a 15, an E15 gear. And then we have that gear. What we're gonna verify is that this gear floats on here very nicely. See how nice that gear floats? It's perfect. Look at this one. This is why they break, by the way. See how it just doesn't wanna, it doesn't wanna float like this one. Almost, I can just barely touch it and it just spins around, no problem. And this one was stuck when I got to it. And when it sticks, the motor keeps turning and then it breaks a tooth off is what happens. This is going to go on the axle right here. And then that goes on the planetary drive right there. It goes into there. We're just gonna be delicate with all this stuff. Make sure we line up our guide holes over here. guided in. Those all look very good. Okay, perfect. Just gonna lay that flat just like that. Let the weight hold that. Be very careful, don't touch any of the numbers. Uh, right now we're going to then reinstall this piece. But first we're gonna just clean it off. This is like a fiber optic piece so the light there's two bulbs at each end and the light shines through it and then it probably just backlights this, backlights everything on that real nice. See how that's aimed right at each bulb? So there's a bulb there and a bulb on this side and it just, the light flows through it and then it refracts off this piece right in here. And then it just directs the light outward. We're gonna lightly dust this face off here. We're gonna be very careful with the uh, speedometer motor axle. Have a bad day if you break that. Okay, that's pretty well locked in. Now I'm gonna put the needle on after I get the the assembly back into the steel cup. Uh, 
I could put the reset button back in, verify that it clips on now. It'd be easier to do it now than later. Done, that's clipped in. That pushes, perfect. Perfect. Don't let those go. Now comes our needle. Goes back in. Do we have any spare parts laying around? No, we don't. Other than the needle. And it's gonna go right on this axle. It's gonna drop in perfect, like that. And we're just gonna gently apply pressure and push it on until we get right to that needle width above that white dash. So we accelerate, let it fall back down. just about a millimeter too low. So we're gonna adjust it. Boom, that's about a needle width above that white dash right there. We're gonna clean the inside of the bezel here because you see this inner edge. This is just a plastic ring on this one. The older ones were metal rings. And there are little markers. Uh, they're slotted right here and here and they fit right into here. Just right. And we have the same thing right here. That lines that up. Now for the bezel. We're gonna put the nicest edge toward the top. And this is looking pretty good. Now for the final piece, we are going to crimp this edge and I crimp this edge down again. So what we're watching for is right there and I'm just going to push it like so. And then what I do is I turn it a couple times, do like a 180, push it back in, push it back in right there. And this does a couple things. This makes sure that the glass is tight. In this case, the plastic glass is tight because this is what is holding the glass in. That is a perfect crimp all the way around. And this speedometer and odometer is rebuilt.